How's it going, everybody? So we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to start with this clove hitch. Now, uh, the difference between knots and hitches, um, knots usually tie something together. A hitch usually wraps around something. So we're going to go ahead and tie some hitches today um, and then another another lot, a knot with a loop. Um, typically, hitches, you have to have something to tie around. So um, this one, when I show you guys in class, I usually show it to you around my thumb. Um, if you have a pencil or something ar around, you can use that as well. Just remember if you are going to tie it to your thumb, not to cinch down super hard. Okay, so for starters, we're going to do the clove hitch. And the easiest way to do the clove hitch, I teach you guys, I call it the, uh, the Mickey Mouse knot, right? So what we're going to do is you're going to start with your rope like so. And I want you to take your left hand and turn it over into a loop like this. And the way it should look is you should have, if you're laying it flat on the table, the loop should come over the top. So on your left side, you should have a loop over the top. The rest of your rope should be underneath, okay? Once you have that, come over to the right side and you're gonna do the same thing, but instead of coming on top, you're gonna go underneath, okay? Now the reason we call this the Mickey Mouse knot because it kind of looks like a set of ears, right? So I have, if you look, I'll hold it this way. We have one on top and we have one right there on the bottom, okay? Now, from here, you're gonna take your one on the right and you're gonna flip it up towards the top and just line up your two holes, okay? So if you see that like this, I'll go back. We have here, we go up and then line up your two holes, okay? Once you have those two holes lined up, put something inside of it, your thumb. We'll do it with this pin, the Sharpie really quick. Okay, and you're gonna pull the one side and you'll see that it'll cinch down. We'll pull the other side and we'll cinch tight. And you see now all the way around that knot right there, around that rope, right? So you'll see you should have a cross pattern somewhat like that and how do you check it well you hold whatever you were tying it to and you pull if I can pull the rope to one side and it doesn't come undone I'm good if I pull the rope to the other side and it doesn't come undone we are good okay now I'm going to show you really quick kind of some issues that some people run into okay so a lot of you guys will, will tie it you'll get it like this you'll be perfect but instead of crossing over on the top you just slide them right next to each other right so then when I put my thumb in and I pull, you'll see it just comes right undone, right? And we don't want that. We want to be tied to that pole. So try that one again. You do a loop on the top. You do a loop underneath. Try to get that other excess out of there. Okay. Then you take your two, take your right loop, put it on top of your left loop. Put your thumb inside and cinch down and you have a clove hitch. There we go. Now our timber hitch. Our timber hitch, you're gonna need something to tie to that's a little bit bigger than uh, just a regular pencil. Um, like this Sharpie is pretty thick, that should work pretty good. So what you're gonna wanna do with the timber hitch is first off, start around something, okay? So you're going to start around and when you go around a pole, you will see that once you do that, you cross them over, you'll make a, a hole or an eyelet and all you got to do is wrap around the back and then come through that hole you made. Okay. And then do it again and repeat this like three or four times. Okay. And then once you have wrapped that enough times you'll see right there go ahead and cinch down with your extra slack and pull tight and you will see you have a nice neat timber hitch now the cool thing about these timber hitch knots is the whole idea is to be able to pull like a heavy load right well if I'm pulling something and I'm doing it repetitively over and over and over all day pulling let's say you know timber or logs what I'd want to do is I don't want to sit there and untie this knot all day, right? So what's cool is the second that I let off pressure or I go the other direction, I can push in here 
and then I showed you guys in class you could wiggle it it comes really loose and the whole knot just wants to fall apart okay some of you guys are probably thinking well why would I want my knot to fall apart well you don't really want it to fall apart but you want it to come undone uneasily when you are taking stuff apart right so a lot of us uh, will tie stuff down in the back of a truck um, we don't want to have to pull out like a pocket knife every time we want to take our load out of the truck we want to just be able to untie the knot really easily and this is a knot that that's fairly simple to untie all right so our next knot is going to be a bowline now what I want you to do when we do this bowline knot you're going to have your long side over to the left okay and I want you to take your knot your rope and make a loop like so but have the long side be on top like so okay so when we have that on top what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our long side over from the left and we're gonna come in through the back of that hole that we made okay now when you guys first start this a lot of issues people run into is when they make this the whole purpose of a bowline is to have this loop right here right well, whatever we do with this loop, that's what we're going to have when we're done. A lot of you guys are in the habit of cinching down that knot. And if you do that, you're not going to have a loop at the end of this. You'll just have a big mess of knots. So we'll go ahead and leave some slack there so we can actually do something with our uh, rope. Okay. Now I'm going to take that in that I just put through the hole. And I'm going to wrap it around that tall, that little short little stem that I made where that first hole is, wrap around that corner there, and then I'm gonna go down through the first hole that I made, okay? Now when I do that, I pull and I cinch down, and now I have a loop on one end with a knot on the other, and I have some uh, some rope to hang on to to either tie up with something else make a stopper knot on the other end Okay, now the one thing I didn't like about this knot that I just did we noticed that I have my Extra slack up here. I got a lot of extra slack. So how would I get rid of that? Well, what we want to do is we want to make sure that wherever that loop is we give ourselves enough room to only go around long enough to make our loop as big as we want and our knot as big as we want okay so I'm gonna come through here like this go through the back side again go around and then come down well before I cinch down I'm gonna move all that stuff out of the way and make it to where my knot is a lot smaller and I have a lot less slack coming through here so then when I pull You'll see I have a lot bigger of a rope. I'll show you guys up here too. I have a lot bigger of a of a hole, and I have a lot more room. Okay, so maybe I need to go around something big like a tank, or I'm tying something round down and I need a lot bigger of a hole. This is what I would do to make that happen. Okay, if I wanted the hole smaller before I cinch down, I would need to make sure. So again, we start with. Here, like so go through the back side and if I want that hole to be a lot smaller I need to manipulate this stuff before I wrap around so let's see we want a small hole let's make it like down here okay small hole go through our hole around and back down so a really small loop really small loop with a long thread on the outside so if we look up here a really small loop with a long string all the way through okay now I could tie these together wrap it around something maybe a package of some sort once it's wrapped around, I could tie a stopper knot to hold it in place. There's a bunch of different ways you can use this bowline. But typically, it is to make a loop so we can put something through. So if I don't have an eye, I'm making my own. Make sense? All right, so make sure you keep practicing these knots. They're all fairly simple. The bowline is probably going to be the one that's going to give you the most run for your money. 
Uh, but like anything, if you keep practicing, you guys are going to get better. I've seen you guys in class already, and you've proven it that the more we practice, the better we're going to be. Okay, so keep on working. Don't get discouraged if it gets messed up. Just rewind the video, watch it again. Alrighty, take care. You guys have a nice day.